Another thing I want to speak, speak is about finances. Very, very important. Every Christian must follow Jesus' example and have a savings account. You say, where did Jesus have a savings account? The bank called Judas Iscariot. It was not a good bank, but he had a savings account there. What do I mean by that? That means when Jesus got some money, he didn't, you know that Jesus was not working for three and a half years. People gave him gifts. He didn't ask anybody. But you read in Luke chapter 8, verse 3, that Herod's palace manager gave him gifts. And that must be equivalent of hundreds of thousands of rupees. He got it. And he didn't say, ah, what I get now I must spend immediately. Tomorrow I'll trust God for tomorrow. Garbage. Jesus did not live like that. I may get a lot today, but that maybe is for the next 12 months. I have to save it. And if you don't have the habit of saving, you cannot follow Jesus Christ. It's not that you get something and you spend it the same day or the same month. Every month, you must save some money from your income, even if your income is very little. Cut down on something. I've had people come here to CFC way back in the olden days when I had more time and I was one of the elders here those days. And um, I can think of at least a couple of brothers like that. They'd get very little. And I'd say, brother, I'm constantly in debt. I say, okay, are you willing to let me take charge of your finances? I don't have time to do that now, but I did it then. And I told this brother, sit with me. Make a, first of all, before you come, make a list of all your income. And all, then my other side, make all your expenditure. Then I'll tell you how to get out of debt. And he showed me how much he was getting, very little. And he'd say, out of that, he, I think it was those days, he was getting 600 rupees or something per month. He'd put top line to impress me, perhaps 10% to the offering box. I said, rubbish, cancel that. No need to put 60 rupees in the offering box. We don't want it. You're getting in debt and putting 60 rupees in the offering box. Do you know what that means? You're putting that fellow's money. That fellow is saying, hey, instead of giving that money to me, he's putting it in the offering box. CFC is stealing my money. No, 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 no. Please give him back his money so that he doesn't think that CFC offering box is getting money should have been given to him. Do not put money in the offering box if you are in debt to somebody. If it's a house loan or a vehicle loan, for instance, that's different. That's not a loan because you've got an asset which is the equivalent of that. But first of all, you should ask yourself why you've gotten into debt at all. You get into debt because you don't know how to limit your expenditure to your income. You have to, this is saying in English, cut your coat according to your cloth. Means that you live within your income. You must have some financial planning. And if the husband can't do it, the wife must do it. If the wife can't do it, the husband must do it. We must decide how much am I earning every month and how much am I spending on milk and vegetables and... I know, I'll tell you this, I've gone this way. We've lived, we were very, very poor when... Uh, Ian's been that way too in the early days. You all don't realize that. I'm talking about 1975, 76. Go and talk to him sometime. And my wife and I lived like that. We had to be very, very careful. I can't tell you how he lived, but I can tell you how I did. We had to cut down on so many things. I don't think we'd buy fish more than once a month. We couldn't afford it. And the cheapest meat those days was beef. We'd never buy chicken. It was too expensive. And uh, we'd go to the beef shop, wherever you could get beef for two and a half rupees a kilo, etc. Fine. And... Uh, We'd get eggs for our children, but never for us. And we were very, very careful. We'd try and give our children the best food possible, and Annie and I would eat very simply. We're not special, and all mothers and fathers are like that. But our main aim was never get into debt. And I had some income from the investments that I got from my parents. And that was my income. It would come not every month, but say once in three, four months, so I had to keep that and say, I've got to use this for four months. And so I would immediately go and pay four months school fees. Uh, they must have thought I'm a rich man coming and paying four months for school fees. 
that wasn't the reason. The reason I was scared that if I don't pay that, <laughs> I won't have uh, fees to pay next month. So I, essential things, and I'd keep aside some money for uh, electric bill. I didn't want the electricity shut off in my house. And budget my expense. And I said, I never had to, I mean, fortunately, I got a wife who was more thrifty than me. I was very, very thankful for that. That I'll tell you honestly, we never bought new clothes. We couldn't afford it, leave alone that. We, had to, we wanted to get good food for our children. There is ways of limiting yourself. So I'm not boasting. I'm just saying we could not, when we could afford it, we could buy washing machine, everything. But when we couldn't afford it, we didn't do it. And we say we have to live within our income. What is the result today? I'm 78 and a half years old. Not for a single day have I been in debt for one rupee to anybody in the world. You think that's a good testimony or not? Because Romans 13.8 says, don't be in debt. And I feared God and I kept that commandment. That's all. Now, I say that if you keep God's commandments, God will reward you. Now, I could have ignored it and say, okay, I'll get a credit card and keep... I've never had a credit card in my life. I'm scared. I use a debit card so that I know what I'm spending. Now, there may be people who are... I'm not saying a credit card is wrong. But if you have the discipline to make the payment so that you don't lose money, then it's okay because they make you... I think it works that you pay every month. If you don't pay every month, they'll charge you interest. Okay, fine. If you're wise, and my, I'm not giving you rules, I'm just saying being wise and don't waste your money. There are people who use credit cards to get certain benefits from it, and they are wise. It's financial planning. I'm not against it. But be careful that you don't get flooded in debt and then struggle and struggle and struggle and wait for people in the church to come and help you out. I've seen people like that. They're waiting for people in the church to come and help them out. I'd say, I'd be ashamed of myself if I become a beggar inside CFC. Imagine becoming a beggar inside CFC. The beggars are all outside, but here's one beggar sitting inside CFC. I don't want to be like that. And particularly if I'm ministering the word of God. I know a lot of preachers are beggars. More than 90% of the ones I met are some type of beggars. So be very careful with finances. It's a very, very important part of your testimony. It says in Luke 16 <clears throat> and verse 11, if you're not faithful with money, who will give you the true riches? So faithfulness with money is very important to get the true riches. You know what the true riches are? <clears throat> Let me say you three things. Becoming like Jesus Christ. True riches. The mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit and his supernatural gifts to serve God. Third, revelation on the word of God and things which are hidden from the wise and the intelligent. I want those three riches. And it says I've got to be faithful with money. I'll get those riches. If you're not faithful with money, God will not give you those riches. Do you wonder why you don't get revelation on God's word? Why the only revelation you get is what you hear from this pulpit? Do you wonder why you don't have a mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit? Do you wonder why you're not becoming more Christ-like in your speech, in your behavior? Think of some people here who are speaking in the same crude, rude way they were speaking 20 years ago. Why is that? God's not giving them riches. They're not faithful with money. They're not humbling themselves. They're not judging themselves. That's all. If you lose your temper, and you're still losing your temper after 10 years in CFC and hearing the word of God, I'll tell you something. Go and bury your head in your bed and say, God, I'm ashamed of myself. And keep on doing that till you overcome your anger. Definitely. I mean, if you're sitting in some dead church where they never preach about it, it's one thing. But you're sitting here for 10 years, and you're still losing your temper? Okay, second best. Do you apologize as soon as you lose your temper? Okay, you haven't got victory over temper yet. But when you yell at somebody and you're convicted, you go to that person and say, even if it's your wife,